decided to do a take two video about the music video Happy Nation because I missed some very important elements the first time which have recently come to light. I mentioned before that it was controversial this song when it came out because some said that it was about white supremacy but then I had said that it wasn't about that it's actually about witchcraft the new age including the Aryan God theme and the occult. So first of all let's talk about the popularity says it achieved worldwide success following the release of their debut album Happy Nation in 1992. It was certified nine times platinum in the U.S. and was the best-selling album of 1994. It says it was one of the most successful albums of all time and the first to produce three number one singles on the Billboard Top 40. This is another one of their singles that was released called Waiting for Magic and this is the artwork for it. You see the Egyptian iconography, Magic Circle, and Witchcraft. And this CD for this single, which is not Happy Nation, it's called Waiting for Magic, but it sells for $200 on Amazon. And I'm sure there's a story behind that one. But regarding the success, we all know that the music industry is controlled as far as what's released and what becomes popular. So I doubt this was an organic success for this band. Happy Nation is a catchy tune, but it does not require much musical talent, in my opinion. So think about that popularity, and let's look again at how that music video for the song Happy Nation is drenched in occult symbolism and images from start to finish. Every single image is witchcraft in the occult. And I'm going to go through them again in this video, including what I missed the first time. So it starts out with this candle burning, which is indicative of a magic spell. It's one of the things that they do in witchcraft and spelling uh, every time. Then after that candle burning, it shows this uh, witchcraft wheel spinning around. And it looks like a Solomonic wheel, magic wheel. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's definitely witchcraft. And then after that, they start doing this incantation and um, I tried to find out what that was, what the words were and I found on a forum that it's a combination of Hebrew and Latin and translates to something like, uh, like this on the wings of an eagle with God's help I was there before everyone in the meantime I will kill you I was there before everyone goes on and uh, coming up here it's going to show you these tablets here which it shows those several times but I was not able to figure out what those are so if anyone knows please comment on it then it shows this uh, thing called a flim Marion engraving that right there which I just found out about, and this is one of the things that caused me to revisit this. About the Flammarian engraving, it says its first documented appearance is in Camille Flammarion's 1888 book, The Atmosphere, Popular Meteorology. It says it's been used as a metaphorical illustration of either the scientific or mystical quests for knowledge which is Gnosticism, and more recently of the psychedelic experience. And that psychedelic experience is another common theme we see in witchcraft and the occult. It's pharmakia. It says the Flammarian engraving appeared in Carl Jung's Flying Saucers, a modern myth of things seen in the skies, and it represents a type of cosmic wheel. Let's look at... Uh, Camille Flammarion. Camille Flammarion was a mystic and a medium and member of the Fellowship of the Royal Astronomical Society, of course. So he fits in with the Knight of the Crown. It says his physical studies influenced some of his beliefs about a cosmic version of metempsychosis, which is the transmigration of the soul after reincarnation. 
He studied Spiritism and he was a member of the Theosophical Society. So in my first video, when I said that the song didn't represent white supremacy but represents the same thing as the symbol of the Theosophy Society, you ain't kidding. So then this uh, Flammarion, it says that he was made a commander of the Legion of Honor. And the Legion of Honor is the highest French order of merit, both military and civil. The Grand Master is Emmanuel Macron of, Fl of France. Back to the video. Another thing I missed is that they show the saint right here. The saint. And it took me a while, but I just figured out who it was, uh, which is another thing that caused me to revisit this. So it's St. Peter. So what about that? Uh, you know, St. Peter is Christian, but <laughs> wait, in this video they sh show him turning upside down and they also turn the image of Jesus being crucified upside down right after that okay so what does that mean here they are turning Jesus upside down but what does that mean well there he goes upside down Apparently, there's a Catholic tradition that when sentenced to death as a martyr, Peter the Apostle requested that his cross be upside down because he felt he was unworthy of being crucified in the same manner as Jesus. This tradition states that Peter was crucified in Rome, Italy, where St. Peter's Basilica there is in Rome in reverence to St. Peter. So see my video titled The Golden Bow, especially at the end about St. Peter's Basilica? So there's a symbol representing this, and it's called the Cross of St. Peter, or the Petrine Cross, which is an inverted Latin cross. And in recent times it says it's been used as an anti-Christian and satanic symbol. It says, over time, the inverted cross came to be known more commonly as an occult symbol. Starting in the 1960s, several TV productions and movie franchises featured the inverted cross as a symbol representing the Antichrist and Satan, making it one of the most popular satanic symbols today. So as I said before, they literally show Jesus being crucified upside down. I'm going to talk about some of the lyrics later. Here you see that they show Sanskrit. Uh, obviously, have, that's ancient Sanskrit, and I have no idea what it says. Probably some demonic spell. Then they show the blue-eyed Buddha, which is a representation of an Aryan god. Then you're going to see that they also show Osiris. And see, they're turning all these right side up. That's Osiris. I said before that it was a pharaoh, but I was in error. It's it's Osiris. And then later on, they're going to show some... Um, oh, there's Origin of Species, Darwin. This, later on, you're going to see they show some astrology stuff with constellations. And uh, that's there. Then, eventually, they're going to show you the peace sign that's coming up. There it is. And I found out this is an upside-down broken cross, the peace sign, and it's also used in the occult. So, if it's an upside-down cross, that correlates to the upside-down cross of St. Peter. Here's a little bit about that. Okay, it says the origin of the logo has been documented 
in the original sketches of the sign, the peace symbol has communist and Nazi, as well as historically pagan, occult, and anti-Christian meanings and derivations. The actual representation of the peace symbol, also known as the Broken Cross, Witch's Foot, Nero Cross, Sign of the Broken Jew, and the symbol of the Antichrist. Okay. So then after that, they show the yin-yang, and that's coming up. Now here's more of the tablet, which I don't know what it is. The yin-yang is coming up. Here, oh, there you go. You see her? She got a little Egyptian thing going on in her, at the corner of her eye, which you can barely see, but it definitely is that. See? There's the yin-yang. All right. So the yin-yang is a cult, but it also corresponds to the swastika. says the swastika and its polar value has the same meaning of the yin and yang symbol. It represents the sun as a reflected function of the North Pole. It's the supreme principle of the universe, the absolute God in relation to cosmic order. It represents the great one of the principle of the universe in the formation of the world. And finally, it symbolizes the great architect of the universe of Masonic thought. And we know who that is. Going on with the video, later on it's going to show more Sanskrit, right there. And then later on it's going to show you the magic circle. Balm. I'll talk about those lyrics later. Looks like he's doing some kind of worship there. Later on, um, it's going to show you the magic circle. Should be coming up. There it is. It's a magic circle, and that's witchcraft. And here's Charles. He's also a member of the, the magic circle. Okay. So, even if you can't see or buy or whatever, some of the other stuff that I've talked about here. Um, towards the end here, it's going to show you this uh, demon, this Asian demon, which looks like a devil, and I don't know exactly which one it is, but it looks like a common popular one. I couldn't find it out. But uh, even if you can't buy the other stuff that I was talking about, you'd have to admit here that this is a demon, and I don't know how that um, translates to a ha happy nation. You know, it doesn't to me, or at least not happy if you follow Christ. And then at the end, it just shows um, the witchcraft circle again at the very end. And there that is. So talking about some of the lyrics... Um, they sing that uh, living in a happy nation where the people understand and dream of perfect man. And these are the same ideas that are illustrated by the Lucius Trust and the fulfillment of the divine plan. Some of the other lyrics are happy nation lead to sweet salvation, all the while showing all these occult symbols. They sing ideas of the past were never meant to last. No man is fit. No one man is fit to rule the world. And they sing this while showing Buddha and Osiris, you know. And those are ideas about um, the pantheon of gods or fallen angels, which is pagan. They sing man will die but not his ideas while they're showing Darwin and his theory of evolution. Uh, they sing we're traveling in time, which sounds like a demon. Um, they show a bomb while they're singing. Tell them we've gone too far and I'm not sure what that means exactly. But they sing also, come through and I will dance with you. And again, that sounds like a demon wanting people to come through a portal. So, <clears throat> Ace of Base is a Swedish band, and three of them are siblings. But you can't find anything out about who their parents were. Which is odd, usually you can. So, I'm not sure if they were commissioned 
to do this song or if they were actually into it as a family. But it's kind of unbelievable that it, this was over 30 years ago they were casting the spell. So we're in a spiritual war, y'all. And that's why I do these videos, because it's one of the ways that I fight back. Thanks for listening.